failing to make an arrest when someone has been killed. Police officers do not act as judge and jurors. These officers did. When they failed to notify Trayvon's family, when they tracked Trayvon Martin into the morgue as a John Doe, when they failed to do even the most basic of investigations with evidence in hand, leaving it all up to Trayvon's family, they became complicit. Yes. They did not drug test the murderer, but they drug tested, they drug tested Trayvon. We still don't know the amount of evidence that has been lost forever because of their criminal acts. This cannot be about arresting George Zimmerman alone. The police must be held accountable for the crimes they have committed against him. As this has been going on, there's been all kinds of emotions going on in my head, right? And it's been hard to have conversations about it. It's been hard to think about it. But we got you, and I'm so glad to see all of you all here saying that we no longer are going to let this happen to our young black boys or any of our kids. So I'm going to read my remarks, and hopefully this hits somebody up. So first, I want to thank every last one of you all for your love and your support of Trayvon Morgan and his family. This is the kind of love and support that all of our kids need to feel each and every day as they make their way home to school or wherever they're going. This is the kind of love and support that communities need to put behind every single kid that we have so that they know we got their back, right? I also want to thank everybody for supporting the hoodies, right? But this is really not why Trayvon was killed. We know he was not murdered because he was wearing a hoodie. Trayvon was murdered because of his race, Right? And Trayvon was murdered because of the systems that we have allowed to be created in this community, in this world, that devalue young black men. Right? She was not murdered by the police. and the police must be accountable, we must hold one another accountable for the culture that contributed to this boy's death. The stereotyping of young black men as something to be feared and killed did not pop up overnight. It has been ingrained in the subconscious for decades and will take even longer to destroy. We have to fight systematic poverty so children can go to school where they even have a chance to receive a good education. We have to stop using words like thug and ghetto when we mean black. We have to complain when the only black person in a book or a movie is a drug dealer, a mugger, or a rapist. We must fight this form of violence from all angles. And by we, I mean Americans. All Americans contribute to the culture that deemed Trayvon a threat, even before he stepped out the door to buy his Skittles and iced tea. That's why it doesn't matter if Zimmerman is Latino. Just like it didn't matter in 1991 when a 15-year-old Latasha Harlins was shot at point-blank range in the back of her head by a Korean store owner. The two dollars she intended to use to pay for the orange juice clutched in her hands as she died. Both of these children were killed because black people are seen as a threat. Both of these children were murdered by a non-white person but denied justice by police in a legal system entrenched in racism. It is hard to read about Trayvon, Trayvon Martin because I can so easily imagine him as one of as one of us. All these things we know about him make him feel like mine. Good grades, loved his family, rode horses, Bank cookies, playing sports. But even if he had a record, even if he cussed his Zimmerman, or if he got in trouble in school, it wouldn't matter. There was no excuse for what happened to Trayvon Martin, or Latasha Harlins, or Oscar Grant, or Sean Bell. I didn't wear a hoodie intentionally. I knew this brother would be here and not have a hoodie either. This is Dr. Dewey Clayton, the Department of Political Science my Morehouse brother. And what we share is the educational lineage of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that we brought to Louisville along with us. And I think Dr. Clayton will tell you that neither one of us is emotional right now or surprised. Because in about an hour, in the classroom right over here, my political violence class will see a video and we'll have a discussion about another young black boy who was killed simply because he was black. In 1955, in Money, Mississippi, Emmett Till was tied to a fan and sank to the bottom of the river because he behaved inappropriately toward a white woman for no other reason than because he was black. Dr. Clayton and I both have done work on Barack Obama. 
And we'll say this to you. Understand, we are not in a post-racial society. Because understand, Trayvon Martin is all over this country, in every state, every city, from northwest to southeast, every day. The great thing about Trayvon Martin is that this is made public, something that we've suffered in private about for years on end. People understand this. Right now, understand the situation of black people in this country. In 2012, not 1912, Right now, black families only earn about 60% of what white families earn. Keep that in mind. Black men are only about 5 to 6% of the population, but we make up almost half of the jail and prison population in this country. Quantitatively, there are more black men and boys in prison than there are on campuses and colleges and universities. Right now, 2012, before Barack Obama was elected and after this country talked about we couldn't let the unemployment rate get to double digits. Before the economic downturn, black unemployment was over 13%. Right now, it's over 16%. Black male unemployment is worth on 19%. This is what we're dealing with in this country. Increased levels of infant mortality, recidivism, disproportionate incarceration, and yes, disproportionate deaths. So what are we to do? I tell my students all the time, Dr. Clayton tells his, you are not here to play games. We've never had a generation of black people in this country where more than 19% got bachelor's degrees. And you can't do much with that these days. You can leave this university with a 2 0 or a 4 0, and they're not the same thing. Since Trayvon started with the young man, another young black woman, 22 year old Rafael Boyd, has been shot and killed by an off duty officer in Chicago for the crime of standing beside someone they thought had a gun. She was unarmed. She was killed by a gunshot to the head. Trayvon Martin was racially profiled, stalked, and murdered, and the police failed to make an arrest. This is not an isolated incident. Since we arrived in this country, black people have been perceived as a threat and murdered by police stand by and do nothing. We cannot stop the Zimmerman and the police we must demand the same for every boy and girl, woman and man, murdered because of their race and denied justice by the police. This is the truth. There is no other truth. There is no justification. There is no maybe. A horrible crime was committed, and as we speak, the murderer and the police who covered his tracks walk free. We have to keep marching and speaking and fighting and to the people who denied this truth have no choice but to accept it. Away from this moment is something that Dr. John said today, and if America fulfills the promise that it made, um, the Declaration of Independence is we hold these truths to be self evident that all men were created equal. Um, and since the inception of this country, African Americans, our enslaved Africans, have been fighting to get that level. Of what do we want? Justice! What do we want? Now! This is Tom Walker from the Kentucky Alliance. Please give me your attention. I just wanted to say to my fellow white people in this audience, let's be thankful for the leadership here today, but let's not let this stay in the black community. Woo! And it is time that we make true uh, or make real the promise that we made. It, um, it pains me to know uh, that someone walks free from a crime that is so heinous. And since the inception of the country, we have been considered the barbarians, but we have to question, what does it mean to be barbarians? The sad part about it is that we still have it. My name is Demetrius B.G. Simmons. I'm the president and founder of the Planet Better Performing Arts Organization. I just want to invite everybody out here to our uh, voices for
for Trayvon Open Mic. It'll be happening at the College Coop on April 3rd. It's 7 p.m. It's free. Come out. It's going to be an empowering and uplifting experience for everybody. Again, there's voices for Trayvon. Just search it on Facebook. We want everybody of any color, any nationality, any gender, any orientation to come out. It's just an empowering and uplifting word because justice still needs to go forth. Everybody have a blessed day. Some 